call the Republican caucus to order and I'll call the roll. Ms. Crosby. Here. Mr. Webster. We'll come back to him. Mr. Westcott. Here. Mr. Arena. Here. Thank you, sir. Mr. Fiducia. Here. Here. Mr. Kelly. I saw his lips move. That's good enough for me. Mr. Butita. Here. Mr. Billings. Here. Mr. Booker. Here. There he is. I do not see Mr. Schultz, and as I said earlier, he uh, he said he wasn't going to be able to make it. Of course, I am also here. Um, Augusta told me that the link between Zoom and YouTube is still not working quite right, so this will not be live streamed. But once we are done, he will be putting it up on YouTube for everybody to see. Um, that being said, I, the reason for this evening's meeting is to to cover the District Four appointment. We had three good interviews last Wednesday, Brad Lindmark, Mike Zintek, and Mike Lepart. Um, is there any conversation on these guys? I think we, terrific turnout. Is there any? Are you? We'll go to Mr. Kelly, then Ms. Crosby. Thank you, Chairman. <laughs> uh, all during my first term under Chairman Christensen, the email that Steve Schultz sent out was absolutely correct. Is that the committee precinct, com the precinct committee men from the district would recommend someone and we always appointed them. So what Steve said was correct. Thank you, Mr. Kelly. Ms. Crosby. Have, respectfully, um, Dave, and I do respect you. Um, I would like to nominate Brad Lindman, and I would appreciate a second. I believe you, Brad, Brad uh, Lindmark. Lin, thank you, Brad Lindmark. I would like to nominate Brad Lindmark, and I would appreciate a second. I would, I would like to second it. Thank you, Fred. The motion is before us. A motion by Ms. Crosby, seconded by Mr. Westcott. Also seconded by Mr. Booker. Yes, uh, here, yes. Is there any discussion on the nomination of Mr. Lindmark? Oh, I can't. Mr. Webster. Can you hear me now? Yes, sir. Yep. yep. Okay, thank you. Yeah, um, thank you for uh, what you just said, Mr. Kelly. That's absolutely correct. And uh, I've never seen us not go with what the precinct committee man and the central committee bring forward. Um, Eli, who is uh, the central committee chairman now, just sent you an email here a couple of days ago, and he doubled down on that, uh, with, with what he's saying in that. He's asking us to please uh, support that process. And so I think that, uh, as I told Keith going into this originally there, um, that's the way I got appointed. That's the way Keith got appointed. That's the way several others have been appointed uh, over the years. In fact, everyone that ever got appointed, that's uh, pretty much the way it happened every time, actually, and so that I'm aware of. And so we've never not done that. And so when, uh, and for instance, when Keith's name came up, uh, Angie Gore's name came up, whatever, the precinct committeeman said who they I didn't know Keith McDonald from, you know, Adam. I didn't know him, period. Didn't know anything about him. What I did know, though, is that his elected precinct committeeman vouched for Keith McDonald, and they said, that's our guy. We've been elected to represent the voters in our precincts, and that's our pick, it's Keith McDonald. So <clears throat> Keith's name came up before us. I didn't even ask a question. 
good enough for me. And as far as the Democrat side, it was the same way. When Angie Girl's name came up, didn't know her at all either. Good enough for me. Precinct committeemen voiced their opinions, and that's fine. And I don't see any reason why we should not uh, adhere to that process, because one of these times it's going to be someone coming out of one of your uh, districts as well, and you're going to want that kind of support as well. You're going to want that that uh, same respect, and so that's what I'm asking uh, you guys to follow that same uh, process there. I, I appreciate that, and so what I'm saying there is uh, to you is I'm going to support the precinct committeeman's opinion in District 4, and therefore I'll be supporting Mike Zintek. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Webster. Is there any other discussion? Mr. Arena. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Ms. Crosby, can you um, explain a little bit about um, why you feel uh, we should um, not accept the resume, uh, recommendations of the committeemen in the uh, district and go with Mr. Lindmark? It'd be happy to, Paul. Here's the way I look at this. I see the old guard trying to manipulate the current board. You got Boomer, you got Eli, you got Rivera, you got all these folks wanting to have input into how we run the county board. Me, I want to go with the best and the brightest, and I believe Brad Lindmark fits that bill. I appreciate how things have been done in the past. I don't have any issue with that, but currently the process has become so political that it no longer is the Angie Goral era or the Keith McDonald era. It's an entirely different era. So I look at this and I say to myself, who would serve us all best? And I believe, and that's why I nominated him, and he'll go up for vote, Brad Lidmark. Thank you for asking, Paul. Thank you. I see Mr. Kelly's hand up. Mr. Kelly. Grab your mute there, Mr. Kelly. Sorry, hit the wrong button. Thank you, Chairman. <laughs> I appreciate what you're saying, Jean, but this is a political appointment. It's specified to be that way in the law. You know, it's got to be a Republican if it's been a Republican that's vacating the seat or a Democrat if it's a Democrat that's vacating the seat. And in the past, the opinion of the precinct committeemen within the district has been respected because it is a political appointment no matter how you slice it and that's why i'll support it thank you mr kelly thank, thank you dave appreciate that is there any other mr webster Okay, yeah, and uh, <clears throat> once again, um, you hit the nail on the head again, Mr. Kelly. Uh, this is a political appointment, and we shouldn't make it personal. And so when, Not personal. when uh, we're referring to uh, the old guard there, Gene, uh, you know, you gotta realize that the three mention that you mentioned on the old guard one was a precinct committeeman, and I'm talking about Boomer, of course, and the other two were former county board members as well that happened to be the two that just got elected to be the central committee uh, leadership there. And so they got elected by a whole gaggle of precinct committeemen countywide. And so I don't think we should uh, refer to them uh, in a any way that denigrates their positions or their personality. So let's not uh, make it personal because there are several former county board members actually that are still involved with central committee, um, still committee members, some of them are on the executive committee as well. And so sometimes 
uh, we look to our forebears, uh, those that came before us, for the guidance and, uh, and the wisdom on the way things uh, work. And this is one of those instances there as well. And so David hit it, the nail on the head there when he said that is in law there that that's what has, has to happen. It has to be Republican chosen by their precinct uh, committeemen. And I, I don't understand why we would uh, do it any differently than that. And so once again, I'm sticking with uh, their choice. Thank you. Ms. Crosby, did you have a hand up again? I, I thank you for your perspective, Jim. I respect it. I just don't agree with it. So thank you. And one thing, this is teaching, I'll come to you in just a moment, Mr. Arena. Uh, I think it is important. I agree with the, when this is all said and done, 2022, I think it's a next chance we should make sure we get out there and uh, help fill up the PC ranks as well. Uh, Mr. Arena. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, <clears throat> and thank you, Ms. Crosby, for the explanation. I think, you know, uh, all three of the candidates uh, had positives to them. Yes, uh, I agree. For me, um, I'm very concerned about, you know, we, we brought up uh, Mr. Boomer's name, but um, I believe in total there's six committee men from that district that made this choice, uh, five or six. And um, those committee men were elected by the citizens that live in that district. And uh, for me, um, regardless of what I might think. And, and for those of you that don't know, um, Mr. Leapart is a very close friend of mine. I have a great deal of respect for him. I think he'd make an excellent county board member. Um, and, uh, and hopefully, you know, sometime in the future, he'll be able to have the opportunity to serve uh, the county in some way. But um, I, I, uh, I think that for me, I need to respect the process that's in place. Um, and the reason we have committed uh, for making these selections and so uh, I'll be supporting Mr. Zintek for that reason. Very good. Thank you. Mr. Butita. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. So um, I, I guess the way I understand it is that the, uh, it, the chairman makes this appointment. And then in November, the uh, uh, Winnebago Republican Central Committee will make the, uh, will slate the candidate that will run in November. So from, from my uh, viewpoint, uh, my responsibility, I, I believe, is to only ensure that whoever is selected is a Republican. And um, so I don't know that I have to uh, uh, hear two decades long uh, tradition of uh, the, the precinct committee and selecting them. So as long as the, the person is a Republican, I, it, in my opinion, he fills it, the bill. So. In, in my understanding, the, the Republican Party Central Committee will select the or slate the November candidate on the ballot. So it may be the same person, may be two different people, but it sounds to me that they will have their chance to do that. So um, at this point, though, I, I will support uh, 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 the landmark candidacy. Is there anyone else uh, to speak on this? Mr. Crosby needed the nomination, second by Mr. Westcott, Mr. Booker, Mr. Webster. Yes, just one more time. Um, I'm glad you uh, brought that up uh, there, Mr. Butita, um, because you have to ask yourself, when in the fall, when that person is slated, will be the person that the precinct committeemen bring forward. In this case, it'll be Zintac. I don't know how, uh, and you know, obviously when you're in an election, the precinct committeemen, that's their job is to go out and promote the candidate from their area, their district or precinct, whatever. So they're an integral part of that as well. And now, if we turn our on their choice in this situation, I don't know how eager they're going to be to support anyone else that's uh, whose name comes up. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Webster. Uh, anybody, any other discussion on the nomination of Brad Lindmark? 
and I'll take a roll call. I did review the, the caucus rules that we'd worked on not too long ago. Mr. Kelly just sent them out again recently. Uh, the chairman of the caucus only votes in case of a tie. So I will be the tiebreaker if it gets down to that. So we'll start off. I'm going to do the roll call. Uh, Ms. Crosby. Yes. Mr. Webster. Mr. Webster? No. Thank you, sir. Mr. Westcott? Yes. Mr. Arena? No. Mr. Fiducia? No. Thank you, sir. Mr. Kelly? Uh, the audio uh, cut out on me. Who are we voting on? Brad Lindmark. No. Mr. Butita. Uh, yes. Mr. Billich. Mr. Billich. Sorry about that. Yes. Thank you, sir. Mr. Booker. You still with us, Mr. Booker? Yes. I mean, yes. Booker's the yes. Okay. Thank you, sir. That's five yes and four no. Mr. Schultz is not here. So Mr. Lindmark uh, has a majority of the support. Is there any other items for tonight's caucus that we need to talk about? Mr. Arena first, then Ms. Crosby. You're still on mute there, Paul. Okay, thank you. Sorry about that. Um, <clears throat> I spoke with some board members, but I don't think I've spoken with everyone. Um, I know I haven't. I uh, have been talking with, um, the uh, state's attorney's office with the treasurer about trying to push forward some type of a proposal to allow uh, property tax owner, uh, property taxpayers who can't pay in full because of the virus to um, um, request a waiver of fees and penalties up until the time of the tax sale. So um, I've asked Mr. Salgado to put that on the uh, agenda for Thursday for discussion. Um, and, uh, you know, if, um, and there's details that we need to work out. So um, the state's attorney's office is, is drafting a resolution to begin the conversation. But whatever you see, um, assuming that something comes out in your packet, um, it isn't a final product and isn't intended for that purpose. So that's one thing I wanted to make everyone aware of. And the second thing um, is that uh, 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 the auditor, uh, Bill Crowley, had uh, <clears throat> spoken to me a while back mentioned that his office hasn't received an increase in salary uh, for eight years. Um, <laughs> he's, um, he's paid less. His office and the recorder were paid less than the other electeds. Like the yeah, if we could adjust that wage, I believe the only opportunity to do it is now. Um, I think if we don't do it now, it would be another four years before we could do it again. I know this is a bad time for, uh, <clears throat> for you know, our budget. But um, I just thought uh, it's worthy of a conversation. So um, I believe I was told that that has to go through Mr. Fiducia's committee. Um, so that's the other thing that uh, is, I just wanted to be on everyone's radar. So while you're speaking, Paul, you know I've had a conversation about the website at the land bank. Has that been resolved yet or do we still need to take action on that? Uh, no, we still have to take action on that. No one has contacted uh, region one to correct that um, for, uh, everyone's benefit. <clears throat> when we negotiated the trustee um, agreement, uh, the, the, the negotiated version was that um, any rejected buyers would be brought to the county board to be addressed in a committee setting where the municipality that's objecting would present their evidence and the, um, the uh, buyer who's being uh, rejected would have an opportunity to speak on their own behalf and you know everything would be done out in the open uh, the 
uh, Region 1 had placed on their website in, um, the explanation that um, <clears throat> this, these rejected buyers would be brought to the chairman. And if the chairman uh, agreed that the buyer should be rejected, then it would go to the county board for approval. Um, so that's not, um, that does not match the language um, in our agreement with R1. And uh, ultimately, the process we have has to meet has to match that language, according to the state's attorney's office. So the state's attorney suggested that Mr. McDonald, as chairman of the committee that um, passed the, uh, the trustee agreement, um, contact them and inform them uh, of the uh, discrepancy. He said, there's not really any reason to take any action beyond that because there's been no negative consequence because of the inaccurate language of the website. Thank you, Mr. Arena. Is there anybody else has anything for the good of the caucus? Mr. Butita. Uh, thank you. I, I know we have a finance committee a meeting coming up uh, this Thursday. I'm not on that committee, but uh, I assume we've already gotten uh, uh, an update uh, as to the shortfall revenue that we anticipate for this uh, budget year. I suspect that may be updated again this Thursday. Uh, it's gonna be my suggestion to the finance committee that um, we know we're gonna be in a deficit that uh, we need to start planning strategically to how we can uh, fill that gap. And I know a lot of people are probably hoping that the federal government will print some more money and, uh, and supply uh, you know, revenues to municipalities and counties all, all over the country. Uh, but uh, hope is not a pretty is not a strategic way of going. So I think we need the administration to start looking into uh, any and all um, <coughs> ways to decrease expenses, one-time expenses possibly, uh, and share the burden across the board. So uh, that's my suggestion that I'm going to put forward to the finance committee and and I would hope everybody is thinking along those lines that uh, we're going to have tough decisions to make here uh, going forward pretty soon. Absolutely. Thank you, Mr. Butita. Mr. Kelly. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, thank you, John, for saying that. Uh, the host fee has often been called a rainy day fund. Hey, the rainy day is here, and we need to kind of hoard that so what the needs of the county are. I agree, Mr. Kelly. Thank you. I know Mr. Webster and I have had very similar conversations right along that line. Ms. Crosby, you're on mute. There you go. All I have to say is that when these host fee commitments were made, and, you know, Jim Webster, you were there, you know, they made 30-year commitments and tied every board every four years for infinitum to um, support those decisions. And now that we're in 2020, and we have a different economic environment than we had before, I believe we have an opportunity to reset some of our commitments because we didn't agree to all that legacy contributions to host fees for three and four decades down the road. So I'm, I would like to have a look at the host fees I don't want to um, shortchange economic development, but I also believe that we overcommitted in multiple places and we have to review that. Uh, we'll go to Mr. Billich first, then Mr. Kelly, then Mr. Webster. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, yeah, in regards to the host fees, and we were having a discussion, I had a discussion with uh, John and uh, Paul, we had a discussion a while back about that, and uh, we were going to attack that. I've already talked to you about it as well. Um, with everything that's been going on, I've already reached out to Chris uh, multiple times as well as Steve Chapman. Uh, Steve has obviously been inundated with a lot of work on the finance uh, committee side of things and organizing all those finance members. Yeah, he actually is having Chris help him out with organizing what our host fees look like. Now, upon that, I've also had the discussion with them multiple times as far as what we're looking at now a lot there was a lot of discussion about how much less we are going to be getting in revenues across different streams um the host fee side of things seems that it's going to be almost business as usual um if you see any kind of a, a smaller amount it's only because of the first few during that shutdown 
and uh, when things were getting reassessed and governments were aligning it. Just basically those companies were trying to see how it was gonna play out. Um, so aside from that, uh, we have been getting garbage uh, coming in. So that means that our host fee funds will look just about the same as what they did last year, what we're anticipating. Um, in regards to looking back at what we had last year and what we're going into the year, this year so far, we've spent a lot less than we have last year. We've had a lot less requests. Uh, we still have not voted in our uh, list of regular host fee funds uh, that we normally do for UIC extension and so on and so forth. The ones that we do every year uh, from our from our annual ones. Um, Jim, I, I think you know a bit more on some of those as well as Jim and other prior members know a little bit more on those. And that's including Severson Dells and a few others that we annually always gave, um, in, you know, uh, since Scott was in office. So my understanding would be that we would still put those forward in a group like we did before. Um, Paul, I remember that you referenced prior when we first got on the board, we got that list in front of us. That list is now shortened to where it's just those items that we annually gave um, for sure. And then aside from that, it's whatever. I mean, we the rest of the annual ones are ones that just usually come in and ask. And as they ask, that's when we have them on the committee. As far as host fee funds, our numbers aren't very huge because we do have a lot of long-term commitments that we're still tied to. Um, in, in reference to your uh, the contracts with those host fee funds, I have talked to Mr. Karolinkas about it a couple of times. I told him that board members have been bringing it up as a topic of concern. So um, with the next, me, with the next uh, um, development committee meeting, that's when I would have, uh, hopefully we would have all that ready for us to actually get. Uh, we do have some numbers that we'll be emailing forward this week and getting Chris work down last week. Good. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Village. Mr. Kelly, you had your hand up and then Ms. Webster after. Yes, I did. <clears throat> and I'm trying to remember what I was gonna say. <laughs> I know the feeling. <laughs> I'll go to Mr. Webster and come back to you, Mr. Kelly, if that you works. took oh, too God. long, Mr. <laughs> Mr. Billich. Yeah, I know the feeling. I'll okay. go to Mr. Webster and if you think of it, we'll come back to you, Mr. Kelly. Mr. Webster. All right. Thank you. This is interesting. This came up like this and some of the comments I'm hearing from some people. Uh, I almost got a chuckle. I've been uh, beating the drum on this issue for the past couple of years and somewhat falling on deaf ears. Uh, when I wanted to put a moratorium on any long-term spending, um, oh yeah, I got all kind of hell about that too. Maybe we did do that. So we haven't added on to that long-term spending list for a couple of years. Um, I think we're going down the right road by if we can afford to make uh, loans to people that have to be repaid, of course, um, as opposed to any more of these long-term commitments. And uh, yes, I was there throughout the process uh, of this. And did I vote for them? Some of them I did. Some of them I didn't. The ones I really have an issue with are for giving money to other taxing bodies when they already have their own tax levy. And so that just did not ever sit well with me. So anyways, uh, I'm glad to see that we're really rethinking this now um, and using that money for things that we really need them for. And Mr. Kelly mentioned that it was a rainy day fund. Yeah, I suppose I'm one of the ones that said that, you know, we need to keep that money for our internal needs, the county, county needs, uh, as opposed to giving it to all the other taxing bodies and so forth. That was a mistake in retrospect, you know, that we can look back on that and say, let's not do that again. Let's move forward and use that money a little more wisely. The annual funds that we have, those are the ones that uh, are affecting us uh, more, I don't know, they're more needy, I think, more closely. Uh, a lot of them are, and we can look all them over and see how many we want to keep supporting and how many we don't. But those are more of the uh, social issue things that improve our our day-to-day -day living and the lives of uh, uh, citizens in our county. Um, and then the ones for the taxing bodies, let them figure out how to, how to get their own uh, money to do their projects. But to fund them, 
no, I'm glad those days, I hope, are behind us. Thank you. I agree, Mr. Webster. We definitely have an issue. So I'll go to Mr. Butita first, then Mr. Bill. Did you remember Mr. Kelly? We'll hit you first, Mr. Kelly. You're still on mute, sir. You're still on mute, Mr. Kelly. Turn off mute. There. Mr. Kelly. Oh, that worked. Okay, good. <laughs> What Jim said is, is right, we, but we already have the moratorium on the multi-year spending and whatnot. What we need to do right now is control the spending on the individual contributions that get regularly made, you know. Uh, we need it for ourselves. Absolutely. I agree, Mr. Kelly. I'll go to Mr. Butita and then Mr. Billich. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, thank you. So um, I appreciate all the uh, the comments. Uh, I, I'm, I'm thinking that uh, the host fee fund conversation is good, but I, I guess I'm thinking a little bigger than this because I don't think the host fee fund is going to bail us out of the problem we we're in. So uh, what I'm hoping that the right. finance committee will do in direct administration uh, to do is to come up with a strategic plan uh, for all kinds of options. Uh, and I'll, I'd like to lay those out in a little more detail uh, Thursday during the Finance Committee. But um, I mean, all options need to be on the table as far as cutting expenses so that we can get our budget in line. Uh, there's a lot of pain going on in our economy by a lot of individuals. Uh, and I, I, like I said, I don't think we can count on the federal government to bail us out. They may trickle in a few funds, but we're going to need a substantial um, strategic plan to address our shortfall. And that's going to uh, accomplish uh, a lot of things nobody wants to hear about. Uh, you know, uh, hopefully not layoffs, but reduce time, reduce pay, uh, reduce uh, services. Uh, these are things that are going to have to happen, probably. I mean, I hate to be the guy to say it first, but um, they're looking us in the eye. So these are the issues I think we have to have the administration give us some options so that we can uh, make a policy decision on how to uh, go forward with our budget this year. Thank you. I agree. Yeah, it's bigger than just the host fee. I agree with that. Uh, Mr. Billich, you had your hand up again? Uh, yeah, actually, just to clarify another thing, uh, and I know why I got on the topic. I was a little bit long-winded. I apologize, Mr. Kelly, for that last one. This one will be short. But in regards to, there was a statement about a rainy day fund. Now, I mentioned multiple times, and I actually asked and inquired about it. Um, with the reports that we're going to be getting for post fee funds, I've also asked for um, to have that description of the correlation between what we spent on host fee funds for the businesses and how much money it brought in tax-wise from sales tax and other ways, um, bringing those businesses to the area and so on and so forth. So that was on, on that regard, but also as far as the rainy day fund goes, I did inquire about what happens to the host fee fund dollars that we don't always use, meaning the whatever's left over that we haven't used for that uh, budget cycle. And that, when I was kind of talked to about it, from my understanding, I'm gonna have to have Chris and everyone else clarify on it. But my understanding is anything that we do not spend on a yearly basis has always gone into a rainy day fund, meaning it was actually used to put back in into our uh, uh, county coffers and actually it was put back into our reserves to rebuild our reserves for whatever money we spent out of those reserves for that budget cycle. So every year that we don't use a certain amount of host fee funds, that's always actually gone back into our reserve funds to rebuild that. Host fee funds themselves do not have their own reserve. That's where I had some questions as well because I thought maybe we had some reserves in the host fee funds by itself and that actually does not exist. It's always gone to our actual county reserves. So everything that we've made host fee, fi host fee wise over the past few years that we hadn't to spend has already been spent on county and taking care of county business. Thank you for that. Mr. Webster. Yeah. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. Okay. 
just a little clarity on this. The host fee funds, all the host fee money goes into the general fund. That's the way host fees are designed. Uh, I think even the chairman's a bit confused on that because he keeps referring to tipping fees. Those are two separate things. A county can choose what they want to get. The county can choose either host fees or tipping fees. It's two separate things. Host fees go to a county's general fund. Tipping fees have to be used by that county for specific things, uh, mainly for environmental or so-called, you know, green things, you know. That's, that's the difference there. And so once that money is in the general fund, it can be used for anything the county so desires. And that's why for years I've been saying we should divert some money uh, every year to our county highway fund. 500,000 a year in our county highway fund, but it's never gonna build a road. I was, uh, someone asked me, uh, you think you can build a road? No, you don't. I'm not talking about using it for building, I'm talking about for, for general maintenance of roads or whatever. Something happens over in Fred's district, for example, and he can say, boy, that road just broke up. Can you come over and fix it? Yeah, it's gonna cost 200,000, but we can do it, all right? Now, as far as the, that moratorium, that was a moratorium on any further long-term spending. The ones that we're committed to now, we have to pay those, like it or not. We are, con by contract, we have to pay those. The only way we can get out of paying those is if we don't receive uh, host fee money. And then <clears throat> as far as uh, surplus money in the host fees, really there hasn't been uh, any really crazy large amounts uh, of money left over out of the host fees. So uh, last year we had a commitment of long-term was $33 uh, million. And so in the past year, we've had two, uh, I think three of those commitments were uh, over with. We were done paying on them because these commitments ran anywhere from uh, a few years up to 26 years. And so as they get paid off, then uh, there'll be uh, a lot more money for us to have in our general fund to use for other things. And so we had 700 and some thousand in our annual commitments, if I'm not mistaken, Mr. Bethita, I think we had, or uh, I mean, Mr. Billich, I think we had 700 and some thousand last year, 760,000 or something like that. And then we had the 32, down to, I think, I think it's down to like 30 million now for our long terms. So I just want to put a little clarity on there. Thank you, Thank Mr. Webster. Anybody else want to talk about host fees or, or whatever? I do have one other thing I want to speak about it and it's uh, uh, responsibly recovering from this virus. I would like for the county to come up with a plan on what we see we can do responsibly. I've talked to a few of you and suggested maybe we can see if we can find somebody from the medical field so it's not just us uh, county board members that think we have all the right answers. We should involve the proper people, but I don't know if it's worthy of a subcommittee or what we need to do to move forward, but I'd like to see a plan that we can come up with for Winnebago County as to how to come out of this virus in, in a, re a responsible way, in an efficient way. So I look forward to any of your inputs and ideas uh, on that. And, and I'm gonna see if I can find anybody in the medical field. And if any of you guys have connections in the medical field, somebody give a, some credibility to, to our ideas or maybe even tell us, hey, that's a dumb idea. You shouldn't do that. Or yes, I, that's probably not a bad idea. We can move forward that way. I see you had your hand up, Ms. Crosby. The only thing I'd like to add is I view the city of Rockford as our biggest partner by far. And I would like to have them included in that conversation. I am very open. That's to my only yeah that's my only recommendation i think it should be a regional thing duran pecatonica roscoe rocked and i think we should all be how can we make responsible choices and, and have a path out of this is there any other discussion for this evening mr arena thank you mr chairman <clears throat> um just to bring another uh thing that we need to resolve to everyone's attention during a public safety uh committee meeting um we were approving an item that was for mental health uh, services or substance abuse services through the um, court system or jail. And I mentioned 
in that meeting that the portion of that was coming that was coming from our general fund should be paid from the mental health sales tax. And Angie Goral um, pointed out to me that the part of the public safety sales tax uh, was uh, dedicated for mental health. And um, now that we've passed this mental health tax, we don't have an option really to increase sales taxes to help close our budget gap. I, I don't see the public coming back with another sales tax increase. So we're looking at you know property taxes is all we have as an option. Um, therefore, um, we have this uh, mental health board, maybe, I don't know, um, who would be involved with that, but they need to sort out how much of the public safety sales tax should be going to mental health in addition to the mental health sales tax. Just something to get on everyone's radar. Not sure how it should be handled, but um, it's something that we need to get clarity on. I agree, Mr. Reno. I think it's a great idea. And uh, we are responsible for our inmates and other things that we do spend a significant portion of our uh, general fund on mental health related issues. I think you bring up a great point. Any other discussions before? Uh, looks like I'm not seeing any. Can I have a motion to adjourn? Mr. Webster, second by Ms. Crosby. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Thank you guys for your time.